Hi there, it's Mr. Stanier here. Uh, I'm going to read you one of my favourite children's books. Um, this book is called Gangster Granny, written by David Walliams. Now, it doesn't matter if you're two years old and getting read this story, six years old, a teenager or a grown-up. This book uh, will entertain everybody. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read to you the first couple of chapters of David Walliams' Gangster Granny. Now, Gangster Granny is a story about a young boy called Ben who hates going to his granny's house. But his granny is a lot cooler than he first thought. Chapter 1. Cabbagey Water. But Granny is so boring, said Ben. It was a cold Friday evening in November. And as usual, he was slumped in the back of his mum and dad's car. Once again, he was on his way to stay the night at his dreaded granny's house. All old people are boring. Don't talk about your granny like that, said dad weakly. His fat stomach pushed up against the steering wheel of the family's little brown car. I hate spending time with her, protested Ben. Her TV doesn't work. All she wants to do is play Scrabble, and she stinks of cabbage. In fairness to the boy, she does stink of cabbage, agreed Mum, as she applied some last-minute lip liner. You're not helping, wife, muttered Dad. At worst, my mother has a very slight odour of boiled vegetables. But can't I come with you? pleaded Ben. I love your ball... What's it dancing? He lied. It's called ballroom dancing, corrected Dad. And you don't love it. You said, and I quote, I would rather eat my own bogeys than watch that rubbish. Now, Ben's mum and dad loved ballroom dancing. Sometimes Ben thought they loved it more than they loved him. There was a TV show on Saturday evenings that Mum and Dad never missed called Strictly Stars Dancing, where celebrities would be paired with professional ballroom dancers. In fact, if there was a fire in their house and Mum could only save either a sparkly gold tap shoe once worn by Flavio Flavioli, the shiny tanned dancer and heartbreaker from Italy who appeared on every series of the hit TV show, or Saving her only child, Ben thought she would probably go for the shoe. Tonight, his mum and dad were going to an arena to see Strictly Stars dancing live on stage. I don't know why you don't give up on this pipe dream of being a plumber and think about dancing professionally, said mum to Ben, her lip liner scrawling across her cheek as the car bounced over a particularly bumpy speed bump. Mum had a habit of applying makeup in the car, which meant she often arrived somewhere looking just like a clown. Maybe, just maybe, you could end up on Strictly, added Mum excitedly. Because prancing around like that is stupid, said Ben. Mum whimpered a little and reached for a tissue. You're upsetting your mother. Now, just be quiet, please, Ben. There's a good boy replied Dad firmly, as he turned up the volume on the stereo. Inevitably, a Strictly CD was playing. Fifty Golden Greats from the hit TV show was emblazoned on the cover. Ben hated this CD, not least because he had heard it a million times. In fact, he had heard it so many times it was like torture. Ben's mum worked at the local nail salon, Gale's Nails. Because there weren't many customers, Mum and the other lady who worked there, unsurprisingly called Gail, spent most days doing each other's nails. Buffing, cleaning, trimming, moisturising, coating, sealing, polishing, filing, lacquering, extending and painting. They were doing things to each other's nails all day long, unless Flavio Flavioli was on daytime TV. That meant Mum would always come home with extremely long, multicoloured plastic extensions on the end of her fingers. Ben's dad, meanwhile, worked as a security guard at the local supermarket. 
The highlight of his 20-year career thus far was stopping an old man who had concealed two tubs of margarine down his trousers. Although Dad was now too fat to run after any robbers, he could certainly block their escape. Dad met Mum when he wrongly accused her of shoplifting a bag of crisps, and within a year, they were married. The car swung around the corner into Grey Close, where Granny's bungalow squatted. It was one of a whole row of sad little homes, mainly inhabited by old people. The car came to a halt, and Ben slowly turned his head towards the bungalow. Looking expectantly out of the living room window was Granny, waiting, waiting. She was always waiting by the window for him to arrive. How long has she been there? thought Ben. Since last week? Ben was her only grandchild, and as far as he knew, nobody else ever came to visit. Granny waved and gave Ben a little smile, which his grumpy face just about permitted him to reluctantly return. Right, one of us will pick you up tomorrow morning at around 11 said Dad, keeping the engine running. Oh, can't you make it ten, please? pleaded Ben. Ben? growled Dad. He released the child lock and Ben grudgingly pushed the door open and stepped out. Ben didn't need the child lock, of course. He was eleven years old and hardly likely to open the door whilst the car was driving. He suspected his dad only used it to stop him from diving out of the car when they were on their way to Granny's house. Clunk, went the door behind him as the engine revved up again. Before he could ring the bell, Granny opened the door. A huge gust of cabbage blasted in Ben's face. It was like a great big slap of smell. She was very much your textbook Granny. Thick glasses, white hair, false teeth, hairy chin and a hearing aid. Are Mummy and Daddy not coming in? She asked, a little crestfallen. This was one of the things Ben couldn't stand about her. She was always talking to him like he was a baby. Together, Granny and Ben watched the little brown car race off, leaping over the speed bumps. Mum and Dad didn't like spending time with her any more than he did. It was just a convenient place to dump Ben on a Friday night. No, uh, sorry, Granny, spluttered Ben. Oh well, come on in then, she muttered. Now, I've set up the Scrabble board, and for your tea I've got your favourite, cabbage soup. Ben's face dropped even further. No, he thought. Chapter two, a duck quacking. Before long, Granny and Grandson were sitting opposite each other in deadly silence at the dining room table, just like every single Friday night. When his parents weren't watching Strictly on TV, they were eating curry or going to the movies. Friday night was their date night, and ever since Ben could remember, they had been dropping him off with his Granny when they went out. If they weren't going to see Strictly stars dancing live on stage live, they would normally go to the Taj Mahal the curry house on the high street, not the ancient white marble monument in India, and they would eat their own body weight and poppadoms. All that could be heard in the bungalow was the ticking of the carriage clock on the mantelpiece and the clinking of metal spoons against porcelain bowls and the occasional high-pitched whistle of Granny's faulty hearing aid. It was a device whose purpose seemed to be not so much to aid Granny's deafness but to cause deafness in others. It was one of the many things that Ben hated about his granny. How's your soup? inquired the old lady. Ben had been stirring the pale green liquid around the chipped bowl for the last 10 minutes, hoping it would somehow disappear. It wouldn't, and now it was getting cold. Cold bits of cabbage floating around in some cold, cabbagey water. Um, it's delicious, thank you, lied Ben. Good, 
said the old lady. Granny seemed to find it as hard to speak to Ben as he did to her. Good, she repeated. How's school? she asked. It's boring, muttered Ben. Adults always ask kids how they're doing at school, don't they? The one subject kids absolutely hate talking about. You don't even want to talk about school when you're at school. Oh, said Granny. Well, I must go check on the oven, said Granny after the long pause stretched out into an even longer pause. I've got your favourite cabbage pie cooking. She rose slowly from her seat and made her way to the kitchen. As she took a step, a little bubble of wind puffed out of her bottle. It sounded like a duck quacking. Either she didn't realise, or she was extremely good at pretending she didn't realise. Ben watched her go, and then crept silently across the room. This was difficult because of the piles of books everywhere. Ben's granny loved books, and always seemed to have her nose in one. They were stacked on shelves, lined up on windowsills, piled up in corners. Crime novels were her favourite. Books about gangsters, bank robbers, the mafia. Ben wasn't sure what the difference was between a gangster and a gangster, but a gangster seemed much worse. Although Ben hated reading, he loved looking at all the covers of Granny's books. They had fast cars and guns painted on them, and Ben found it hard to believe this boring old Granny of his liked reading stories about crimes. Why is she so obsessed with gangsters? thought Ben. Gangsters don't live in bungalows. Gangsters don't play Scrabble. Gangsters probably don't smell of cabbage. And that's the first few pages of Gangster Granny. Ben has the coolest granny ever. Thank you.